Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Hunter, for inviting me to speak with you. This is really a, a pleasure always, but an honor as well. Um, thank you. It's yeah. an honor to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> so I'd like to start kind of where we started our conversation about how you've been investigating um, not only the linguistic meaning of OK, um, but also how to cultivate um, a method of becoming okay and making oneself um, a state of being okay? <sighs> well, um, when I was in high school, I took a linguistics class. And um, in that class, we discussed African retentions in the English language. And okay was one of the words that was on the list that we were, that we were discussing. And um, I remember uh, looking back at, um, I had found a few narratives um, of enslaved people where I saw okay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but how could they be okay given the constraints on their, their bodies, their spirits, their labor, how could they be okay? And um, I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe they were making a space, creating a space where they were okay. So this, this idea had been with me for quite a while, but when I started looking at the word, um, I found that there were other linguists that had different origins of the word. For right. Choctaw, mm -hmm. where some of them, uh, well, Wolof and Mende, which again makes that connection to the continent. But then um, there was even one for the post, I think in 18 something, that that was the first time that it was used. So mm -hmm. it became problematic for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think the worthy, worthiness is in that investigation of not only um, you know, trying to, to find where that meaning might have come from, but how that state of being you know, is cultivated and, 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 um, and shared. And I know that part of that um, is space making for healing, to like ameliorating and, 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 and medicating um, the spirit. Exactly, I was thinking that there must have been some way that we created a space where we could imagine, mm -hmm. where we could heal, where we could cultivate our creativities and our intellectual, our intellect, mm -hmm. um, a place for, um, to revive ourselves and because when I looked at reconstruction, I was like, how in the world could you go from being enslaved to a situation where from 1865 to 1875, we built schools, hospitals, colleges, businesses, and we took political power. We had 1,500 to 2,000 offices that we held politically. Mm. How did we do that? There must have been some place where we could plan some state that we created for ourselves, where we could think in terms of the future, regardless of the kind of physical uh, challenges and the racism and the oppression and all of it that came with it, we made a space. Mm -hmm. And I was very interested in how we did it and what was that space. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, and it sounds like in looking at the work um, in, in how um, transcendent and, and like the, the, um, the aspiration for that, that state of peace and balance and justice um, is in the work, you know, mm -hmm. that is what okay feels like. Mm -hmm. um, 
And if you wanted to go more into um, a moment to rise up, it seems like that school, that freedom school uh, ethos and, and uh, aspiration is, is in there. Yeah, so I moved from the, from the okay to thinking in terms of flight. Mm -hmm. And thinking of flight not as uh, running away from, but seeing it as a state of consciousness, mm -hmm. a state of consciousness that created a place, right, a space. Mm -hmm. And um, so, um, yeah, that's how I was thinking yeah. about it. And in this piece, um, as in many of the pieces, uh, this one has a, a Kokongo um, a cosmogram in it. Um, and I like to put things in the work that it's almost as if um, people have to, they have to come to look for it. Right. And um, so I have that in the spaces. I have the uh, circles in the spaces, which at the basis of African philosophy and thought, there is always the circle. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the, uh, the uh, murmuration the, uh, format forms. Mm -hmm. But what, what connects this to the work prior to it is that breaking of the uh, rectangle, that burst of color, for me is boundlessness, that breaking of what would it be a rectangle in these, I try to break it with color and form that, um, that lift the soul. Yeah. yeah. And, and this, this central piece really is what does that. It, it um, reaches out um, in all directions, it comes forth, um, but also, in the material of that work, if you can tell us some more about um, the actual material that makes up that sculptural form that bridges these two. Yes, well, I have to really thank Pyramid Atlantic for giving me the opportunity to, um, uh, to play with paper making, to, to, to get my hands in it and, and see what could be what I could make happen with that. So there is um, paper that I made uh, from, from scratch mm -hmm. in this, as well as paper that, um, commercial paper that I printed on. And so um, having come from a printmaking background, I find myself always incorporating some type of printmaking. So this is linoleum in there mm -hmm. and I use a uh, colored pencil over the um, over the acrylic so and the acrylic is in lots of lots of it must be about 30 different layers of very sheer um, glazes over and over and there's also collage so it's a lot yeah. <laughs> a lot going on in these there's like a, a topography and a, a landscape of the, the surface of your work. I mean, you can see these pathways that even if they don't differentiate, differentiate themselves by color, you see the, the, pat, the pattern or the texture coming out or the sheen versus the matte yes. um, in, in the work. But a word that you use, play, is also, I think, very special um, in terms of breaking the constraints that you, you talked about, you know, the constraint of the, the traditional rectangular form, like you, you are, Playing, you yeah, know? well, you know, um, my, my husband used to say, um, go on out there in the studio and have a great time. And I used to want to almost chew <laughs> his head off because, right. because for me, a lot of times, it was just such a struggle. Yeah. Um, but I found that um, during COVID, I took a different approach to my work. I decided that it was very necessary for me to be here, yeah. to be right here mm -hmm. with what was going on, with what was being felt. And um, so all of the book work that I do a lot of times beforehand, yeah. I put that 
I let that go along with the developing of the work instead of having come to a certain level of understanding and then going to the work. Mm -hmm. I worked through the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, so I actually got a chance to play. So this has been different for me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think it has, it has been freeing. Yeah. And has an element of okayness, of like that uh, healing part yeah. um, after this post-pandemic era, you know, yeah. really having to to heal from that, those tra traumatic experiences. Um, but another, you know, space, sacred space and healing space that I know is important to you is the ring shout. And yes, the ring shout is very important because um, when I was, I was looking for uh, entry into flight. Yeah. And I think that um, the ring shout was one of the en entry spots that we had for uh, entering that state of consciousness that allowed us to make that space uh, where we could do this healing and planning and loving and, and all the things that we did to keep our humanity. Right. And um, so in that wall, ring shout, there's call and response, there's rhythm, uh, there's a certain level of ritual. Mm -hmm. And I place that not from, I place the, the, the impetus for this making this space really not with the trauma of what we felt here, but with our ancestral memory from Africa. Yeah. And I think that's really, really important mm -hmm. because we do not want to, we, I, I think it's important for us to consider mm -hmm. um, what happens, the, the kind of, the count kind of formation that we create when we build it on trauma. Yeah. I think we need to build it on the, that ancestry, ancestral memory. Right. That um, that that one hundred and nine. What is it? One thousand nine hundred years of evolution mm -hmm. that of the African we embody. Mm -hmm. That that is where we should place it. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And like you said. Um, a lot of our, our creations and our innovations have been misattributed to a response to, to exactly. the trauma when it is in fact an ancient memory. An ancient memory. Yeah. And, I, um, and I really uh, have to uh, take a look at uh, So May and his, his book mm -hmm. of Water and Spirit mm -hmm. where he talks about the drums mm -hmm. and the dance and how they actually opened up another dimension. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that their initiates would go through. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so these really, these circular forms, these ring shouts are dimensions in and of themselves. Yes, yeah. very much so. Yeah. And, I, and I think that we were able to, um, to create these entry, these doorways into this consciousness, not just with the ring shout, but also with quilting bees mm. that men had mm -hmm. and women had, and that sense of community yeah. that happened there, and church, and, um, um, and the other activities, communal activities that we had. Yeah. Communal, right. not individual, communal. Right. Yes. Yeah. And this piece, redemption, loopholes of redemption, you know, loop, with loopholes, um, you know, certainly being a space. So a lot of times we think of it as a circular space, but it also is like a slit um, uh, to see outward. But you were kind of inspired by or or looking at Harriet Jacobs yes. in terms of her loophole and retreat. Yes, um, I read uh, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. Yeah. And in that, there's a chapter um, where she talks about uh, loopholes of retreat. 
And um, in, this, in this book, she, uh, she expresses, she's telling her story about being in a attic space where she could not sit up in that space, it was so tight, for seven years. She was able to escape and be in this space and watch her children grow in this space. But while she was in this space, she created things, she thought, she was creative, she was thinking and planning for what was next mm -hmm. for herself, for her children, in this, con in this confined space where it was cold in the winter, where it rained in there on her, where she um, sometimes had food, but sometimes not. I have no idea how she was able to eliminate, you know, her, you know, her bladder, her, yeah. I'd have, I mean, it's just an incredible account. Mm -hmm. And the book itself is tremendous. I mean, it's just riveting to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and she was strategizing, you know, because Ex she could. Definitely. She wrote letters to, and, and sent them to, through someone to, to mail them from the north so that her former owner, or um, owner at the time, would think um, that she was elsewhere, all the while planning her, her real departure. Exactly. Yeah. And so it, where she was talking about retreat, I wanted to, I, my piece I titled um, uh, Loopholes of Redemption to, in order to give that agency, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I feel like that is something that w through every aspect of our life or as a people, our documentation about who we are, that's one of the things that we're fighting for now is to take back the agency mm -hmm. because other people have written these histories, these doc have documented these things and taken the agency out of it. And so we have to put that agency back in there. Yeah. Well, the combination of, of loophole being, um, you know, an ambiguity, a technicality, a means for escape, a space or a portal, that's very much what you're creating, these apertures um, and openings into new dimensions. Um, but you also um, were looking at vessels. Yes. As these being, um, spaces um, to hold and to give birth from and, and all. Yes. So if you, if you imagine yourself flying over these pots, mm -hmm. what would you see? Mm -hmm. Those circles, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that is um, a part of what I was thinking about. Entryways, thresholds, vessels um, to other for right now, I have to use the language that we have and I'll say dimensions, but I think we have to think about other ways, other language, mm -hmm. other language, create our own language. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, creating our own language is going to be very important because um, the language, the colonialist languages that we have, um, a lot of times, uh, there's a certain limitation that they have for spiritual mm -hmm. concepts. Mm -hmm. And so um, we may have to create our own on that. Absolutely. And you had said something in describing this piece before too about the space outside. Yes, yes. Uh, my friend Sheila Kreider, I was showing them to her and she said, she said, Z, you know, you don't have to always thinking about going outside of the square, the rectangle. You'll see this big long one here. So I had to put something on it. I had to cut something away to give it the ability to move beyond the rectangle, right? And she said, you don't have to always do that. And I sat and I looked at it. I must have looked at these things for a week. <laughs> and then I said, oh my God, there is, an, there is a eternity outside of, but there's an eternity within. And so it made me feel okay to have these shapes diving into these 
these spaces and exploring that that infinity within yeah. you know because it's like it's like uh, when you're looking through a microscope yes outside there's an infinity but then it goes down to a point and then you know there's an infinity w within all this microscopic world yeah. right yeah. so yeah mm. And I'd like to um, kind of share with the, the group um, a piece that you told me was quite um, informative and, and referential um, in terms of um, your study of, of nature and of community and how we have moved and uh, worshiped together. Um, and it's Revelations um, by Alvin Ailey. Mm -hmm. And so I'll play uh, just the first movement, which is about three and a half minutes, if you all, it, it feels longer when you watch it, but um, the formation of their bodies together. If we can take a look and think about some of the, the formations that you see. And the song under this is so, it has a heaviness mm -hmm. and they just defy it. Look at that. <laughs> There's also a, a plant or a treeness, like a growth upward um, that they have as well. And the thing about a murmuration is that when you move away from when the birds move away from that formation, they cannot fly at the height or the velocity as they can when they're together. There's a lesson in that mm -hmm. for our people. And we can actually see them mm -hmm. in flight. Mm -hmm. Incredible, right? I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> They also keep each other warm, from what I understand, the, them being together. And if you can tell us that story about you seeing a murmuration for the first time. Yes. I was in um, high school, and I was on a farm. And um, I woke up one morning to all this clamor. And I go out, and there are birds in a clearing, and they're just whipping up the dust. They're in the dust, they're whipping up the dust and they're making all of this noise. And I looked up and there were so many coming to join the ones that were on the ground. And they made themselves into this whirlpool. They just kept coming and coming so they made this big whirlpool and then you just watched it just mm -hmm. go. And it was just amazing. <laughs> And we move in, in murmurations too, as yes, the crowds we as we yes, go, we as, we, as we Yes, indeed. And a, just your past, um, a, a past uh, series has a murmuration quality to it as well. The, the Greek Greeks for the first wave for the third millennium. Yes, now these I made during uh, 2020. And um, I was working there was a small group of us, Adjua, Cheryl, um, um, Gail, and myself, the four, four women, and we met all during the, all during the uh, COVID. And, um, and I, was, I was beside myself. I was beside myself. I felt as if, during COVID, I felt as if I was watching a genocide, and I just did not know what to do. I was, not in a good place. It's okay. And um, I said, well, I'm an artist, I'm going to make some work, and I'm going to make something that could heal, um, protect, inspire. Those were the three things. And I looked 
to my ancestral memory, I looked to Grigri's, which are talismans that we carried with us on the continent in many different parts of the continent that were uh, many times leather or sometimes metal, but they were filled with things, a, a lot of times, sometimes words from the Quran, sometimes words from elders, sometimes pictograms, and um, they were there to heal and protect the person that was carrying it. So I kind of yanked that concept into the 21st century with me and my uh, abstract self. <laughs> and um, I created these pieces, uh, each of them named for a different, uh, well, I matched them to the energy of a different jazz uh, musician or a tune. Because during that time, the music was very calming and helped me to be able to cope. Mm -hmm. And um, in the backs of these pieces are different um, items. I went to different um, people from different uh, belief systems and asked them, well, what, would I, what, what could I put in there? And so some of the things that I had in there were things like rose quartz for love and sage puring, purity, lapis, uh, protection. And my daughter had, bought, had gone to Egypt and she bought, she said, mommy, I'm gonna bring you back something. And she bought me back a bag of sand because she knows <laughs> that her mom, whenever she went to camp or something, was like, bring me back some of those bugs and stuff. And she was like, oh my God. So she bought me back sand and I put the sand in little containers. And so these are some of the things that are sealed in the backs of the pieces. And the, the, that sealing uh, acted as like an ashe. It gives it, it gives it its power. Mm -hmm. And so um, adinkra symbols are in there and cowrie shells. Uh, and um, they're all, they're plants. I mean, I had about 20 Jasper. Uh, I had about 20 different items. Mm -hmm. So each one has a different set of things in there, but they all have a uh, uh, part of a saying from the uh, Zulu personal declaration, which I find is an incredible, it's, it's just an incredible thing to read. And, um, and then um, some of them, I didn't put these in all because it's a very powerful prayer, but it's a prayer um, from Bukman mm. that, um, that the Haitians during their revolution, everyone knew that prayer. Okay. And I felt that there were some warriors that yes, they're gonna need that prayer. Mm -hmm. So some of them have that in them. Yeah, wow. Are there any lines that you have from the personal declaration that you wanted to, any favorite? <laughs> I, I have one. It's a, it's a long, but this. I evolve forever in response to the challenge of being human I have a mind to light my path in the mazes of the cosmic order. My mind has many sides. It, is, it comprehends all things. It establishes my right to latitude, to being heard. It makes me feel at home in the cosmic order. Now, you think about a people that understands themselves in relationship to the cosmos like that, a personal, a personal relationship to the cosmos. Now you understand why the kind of violence and terror had to be inflicted on our people to cut us down. And when you read this document, it is amazing how they felt about who they were. Yes. Who they are, who they will be. Mm -hmm. 
And so in looking at are. flight pattern mm -hmm. of the murmuration, we see that in this piece mm -hmm. and throughout, you know, that same wave vibration mm -hmm. um, that, we, that we're on together. And so I guess that takes us into your idea of being in flight, but beyond the physicality of uh, flight. But yeah. the word and how we can think about, you know, being airborne or skyborne or yeah. not grounded. We are so much more than our bodies. Right. And uh, this society has continually pushed us back into our bodies. Mm -hmm. But we are so much more than that. Yeah. And um, I think I just want to uh, compel us to think about that. Think about that. In terms of the process, this piece is called In Flight. Uh, this is soar, this is up, and ascend, all of which are, of course, synonyms of the word. But you, as you're building these things in your process, you are ascending and soaring these materials outward and upward, right? Yeah, yes, I guess it could be said, I guess it could be put like that. And I thank you for that. <laughs> But yes, I was definitely felt as if I was constructing something. And like I said, this, these, these were, they were moving in their own, they, I was compelled to build them. Mm -hmm. um, and my understanding of them was not right there with, it, with the building of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it lags behind. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I knew that during that time, I, um, these came after the installation with the, mm -hmm. so it was, it, it was just flowing from one thing into the next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All, each bird's another bird, new birds. <laughs> and we talked about, you know, black girls in flight mm -hmm. and how that has been in your work uh, for many years. Um, and if you want to speak to yeah. this piece in particular. Well, I did a series called Nia in the Box. And um, Nia is purpose in Kiswahili. And the, all of the pieces are women and girls pushing themselves, le uh, levitating themselves um, beyond the box. So you never find the whole person inside of the, uh, the composition. So you'll see this one, this one was um, enfranchisement. And um, there's all these boxes in the piece, uh, small prints um, that are collaged back into the print and then painting into the print and printing into the painting and then glazing over it. So, uh, uh, but they're always pushing out. Yeah. And there is a reasoning for you kind of incorporating this power, these power symbols into their skin. Yes, yes, because um, the, there are dinkra symbols in the piece and um, a lot of time, and there's cowrie shells in there. You'll see the cowrie shells. And you'll see the triangles even mm -hmm. are, are in there. Uh, they're just in a different format. So it's just, these were in 2002. So you can see that there's this, this just a continual <laughs> evolution, I guess, mm -hmm. that's going on. But I, I love the attitude here. Yeah. <laughs> and that's my daughter in the center. Mm -hmm. But um, there are Adinkra symbols there, and the Adinkra symbols are all under their skin, are glazed back into their skin, back into their clothes. Because I guess uh, in, in actuality, I think I see every, everything, everybody as an energy. Yeah. More yeah. than this physical thing, right. I see us as energy. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And we joked or we laughed about you were doing black girl magic before it had a name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and Newt, Newt was very yes, much yes. part so of your thinking. She is yes, she's like the sky, she's the universe and all the people are underneath Newt, mm -hmm. that goddess in Egypt. Yeah. Yes. And she's making a space. And Kemet, I should say Kemet. Kemet, yes, yeah. Let me be correct in yeah. this. And she's making the same space that your vessels make. She is the vessel. Her womb. Yeah, mm -hmm. And so we you said one piece of this, this statement that you had made before, but mm -hmm. another part is that soul power is a technology, and that's very much a part of that spiritual quality and ashe that you work into the work. Soul power is a technology. Yeah. And we have our little cell phones, and we have our computers, and we think, oh, aren't they marvelous? But baby, they ain't got nothing on soul, on soul force. No, yeah. nothing on it. And we started to we started to examine that really during the 60s. Mm -hmm. We started to understand about soul powers. We called each other soul brother, soul sister. We felt that electricity between when those energies met when we did that. Mm -hmm. um, but the uh, entire society saw it too. Mm -hmm. And it deemed never again. Yeah. But we can make the decision to waken that back up again. Yeah, yeah. And this piece has, the title comes from Kemet as well, yes. but also Amiri Baraka's poem. Yes. Um, Kaba is the poem, but if you wanted to speak on the, the Ba and the Ka. Yes, well in uh, Kemet, the Ba and the Ka are parts of the soul. Um, I get them mixed up, I know one, Wait a minute, let me see, I wrote it down because I always confuse them. Okay, uh, Ka is the life force, mm -hmm. right? And Ba is a human-headed bird mm -hmm. that kind of stays on this plane and guides um, those loved ones, your loved ones, yeah. guide you. And um, uh, I chose that because I had this uh, poem that Baraka had written, and I saw online, you gotta see it, there's a young man that reads this poem, and let me tell you, when he gets finished reading that poem, you're gonna have goosebumps. It's just amazing, he's a young man, young. And it's Baka. A closed window looks down on a dirty courtyard and black people call across or scream across or walk across defying physics in a stream of their will. Our world is full of sound. Our world is more lively than anyone's. Though we suffer and kill each other and sometimes fail to walk on air, we are a beautiful people with African imaginations full of masks and dances and swelling chants with African eyes, noses, and arms. Though we sprawl in gray chains in this place, full of winters, when what we want is sun. We have been captured and we labor to make our getaway into the ancient image, into a new correspondence with ourselves and our black family. We need magic. Now we need the spells to raise up, return, destroy, and create. What will be the sacred word? So that is by Amira Baraka, mm -hmm. and I loved it. What's the name of it? It's called Ba-Ka, B-A-K-A. And you made mention of this, uh, the cos Congo cosmos cosmogram, as not only a structural form that you use um, in the compositions, but a spiritual kind of philosophy that you're, of course, working with. And um, yes, there is a um, philosopher. Oh goodness, he's just he's he's a lot of different things, but his name is Fukiao, and. Um, he came here to Washington, D.C. Um, and did a lecture for black artists of D.C. 
and he talked about the physical world and the spiritual world in terms of this cosmogram. And, um, and I found it, um, so you, it's, it's, we are, we are, let me see. There are these different aspects of, of being. So there's a beginning, there's birth, there's maturity and death, right? And it's moving in this, in this counterclockwise kind of format, very much like the ring shouts that we saw. So there's a connection. You see, we're remembering, but we're, we're not remembering everything, you know? So, um, so yes, this, he was very, um, I'm still, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to com comprehend everything. But he's also talking about the different stages of life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not a linear thing for us. It's a circular thing. Mm -hmm. And not only is it circular, but you come back again and you do it over again. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it is, it gives another kind of hope in a way, uh, this kind of understanding. Yeah, I might not have gotten it all together this time, but I'll be back, mm -hmm. all right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. and so these are the four moments of the sun, as you say, mm -hmm. and you have incorporated that on a deeper level to the work itself because mm -hmm. Not only do you have the form, but the times I, of day yes. are in the work. So I, when I was doing the work, I was thinking in terms of the t different times of day. So you will see that there are night pieces, there are dawn pieces, there are pieces at sundown using the color, mm -hmm. you know, utilizing the color. So, in, and again, invoking those stages of those life. Those stages and, of life. And that's yes. cyclical. Mm -hmm. But to bring it back, 15, 20 years, <laughs> 20 you were doing years, it before. I was doing it still. The four this moments was when of I was sun. figurative. Yeah. And here you could see the four moments of the sun. Mm -hmm. And here are those murmurations, but they're different than mm -hmm. And um, the dandelion. And the dandelions. The dandelion for me is a a motif, a um, maybe an icon that describes our folks. Mm -hmm. In that black folks, just a dandelion. You can stomp on it. You can pull it. You can try to pull it up. You can try to poison it, but it keeps coming back, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have used the dandelion in uh, my work pretty, pretty consistently as a, as a um, signifier for black folks. Yeah. And I guess to speak on that cyclical nature is a quote from Fukuyao himself. Mm -hmm. I'm going and coming back being around the center of vital forces. I am because I was and re-was before, and that I will be and re-be again. I love that. <laughs> and again, in a later body of work, but again, in flight with the cosmo cosmogram, you know, kind of bringing the spirit down um, uh, to, to, it's like a mediation mm -hmm. um, of, of between worlds. Um, and these are quite large, actually. Yeah, they're, these are they're sculptural. Like, these are like, this is over eight feet mm -hmm. tall. This is a little, this is a little, this is probably, we're, we're about eight feet. This mm -hmm. one's a little, maybe nine feet. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then with this on the bottom. So it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. quite a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this one I, I did when um, Aretha Franklin passed. I just ha I had to do something for her. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was my piece for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Throughout your work, um, patterns um, are quite prominent. But like you were saying about the dandelions, you have kind of created your own glossary of iconography, you know, mm -hmm. and symbols and, uh, and patterns and, and even color, 
that you kind of return to. And I think that makes it signature for you, but also you're encoding messages and language um, that has that healing property that you, you intend for it to have. This being flight patterns from the recent work, um, and we're seeing actual flight patterns move through the work, but triangles have evolved you know, throughout mm -hmm. your, your throughout. time. Mm -hmm. And how do you use triangle, triangles specifically? Um, I, they are great for designating direction. And, um, and I, I, I don't know if it's my imagination, but it's, it's interesting when, when using, when creating the murmuration form through triangles, I find that if I have them all one color, they move at pretty much the same, they seem to give the illusion of moving at the same rate. But when I change the colors of them, it's like it quickens them. Mm. <laughs> and I, I saw it with paint and I would say, oh man, this needs, to, this needs a little, little pickup here. And I would uh, glaze in another color and it would, it would just seem as if it made it move faster. Mm. And I, I don't know what the, you know, I don't know what the optical, if there is any optical science to that, but that is something that I experience myself. Mm -hmm. And I use a lot of arches, arc kind of shapes, mm -hmm. because I find that they, um, they have um, like a reaching kind of, um, uh, I guess they give the illusion of reaching yeah. for me, they do. So yeah. I use a lot of that form. Yeah. And um, as we, because there, there are some arcs that I'll, I have examples of, but you introduced me to this space in particular, um, and I felt it was so, so connected to your work in how you use the circle. Mm -hmm. um, and not only the circle, but this idea of these portals connecting sky to earth to, to, to the spirit world underwater. Um, but these passageways and this um, space is at the National Museum of African American Art and History and Culture. And it is like, it's a healing space. Mm -hmm. It was created so, so that when, you're, when you go through, when you come through the, the, uh, the, the foundation, the base, it is so heavy. Mm -hmm. It weighs. You can come here and you can sit and you can cleanse yourself. You can, you can put what you've seen into perspective. You can clear yourself of energies of anger and if hate is felt, you can cleanse it there. Mm -hmm and you can move back through the exhibition. I think it was one of the wisest things that they did in the development of that space. Yeah. Where is it located? In the Museum of African American History and Culture. Yes, it is. Right, I've been in the basement, but I don't know a lot of people miss it. Uh, a lot of people miss it. Right, around the, right next to the cafe. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is John Hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I go, I go there sometimes when I need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. So potentia, like you, we see the triangles, but they haven't yet formed a flock. You know, they haven't gotten directions, um, or or consulted each other in, in direction. Um, but you do see the swoops and the arches and the waves that you see that are mm -hmm. continually evolving um, as language in your work. And there's something about your brush strokes that are oh. special and beautiful. Um, and this piece, actually, you can see it even more prominently, that black, these are brush strokes that you've then cut out and isolated mm -hmm. as a movement or as a gesture in space, taking yes. flight in space. And uh, the Potentia um, series was, um, I, I remembered as a child, uh, the. Elders would sit on the porch sometime, and the children would be out playing. And the elders would be sitting there, you know, they're talking to each other. And every now and then, you know, a sister would look and she said, See that boy right there? 
that boy got potential. And everybody knew when they said that boy got potential, he was going to do something with his life. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I just loved the way that they could identify it. They could feel it. And so I did a series of potential where I was trying to capture that energy that perhaps they saw mm -hmm. or felt in, mm -hmm. the, in the people. Yeah. So we see again these, these swoops and, and arches in the potential, but then now in this newer um, body of work where they're... Uh, and I think know. they're going to end up, because I see myself spending a few, uh, some more time on these, mm -hmm. and I think they're, those brush strokes are probably going to come back into this body of work. I love them. <laughs> they are particularly stunning. And I don't know if you all remember in that uh, formation during um, Revelations that we were watching earlier, but Ms. Hunter actually um, created a form of this piece based on these, these hands coming together, if you see um, the shape. And the way that I always interpreted that hand formation is a clap. Oh. And a clap is, you know, especially a church clap is communal, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's keeping us all in time with one another. But I think it's important how you look at shapes out from all places. All there's, places. There's no, um, there's no one source that you're gathering information from. Yeah, Zora, her, uh, Zora Neale Hurston would talk about uh, when she was working on her, doing her anthropological work, mm -hmm. she called it something like the vacuum method. It's like she just took everything mm -hmm. in. And I think that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. And sometimes it can get quite confusing, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, but it just makes for very interesting connections. And yeah. Things. But nature is the teacher mm -hmm. um, that you definitely incorporate. Mm -hmm. um, the raven, if you yes. want to talk about the raven. Oh, I love ravens. They are, um, they have real personalities. And um, I used to watch them a lot outside of my house. And um, when I was doing the, uh, the flight uh, series, one of the things that I did was uh, think about their wings and all the different blues and purples. It, we, call, we say that they're black, right? But when you look at them closely, you'll find all these blues and purples, this iridescence. And then I try to, you can show that next one, mm -hmm. I'll pick it up in this piece and the little guy over there. Um, uh, night flight and um, the other one too. There you ain't got no wings, wings for, night for night blues. Mm -hmm. So in here you'll see there's there's blues, there's blacks, and um, I'm I'm pulling from those the color the way that black shows itself actually in birds. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so birds you know, have shown up in the, in the work before. You've yes, been and these are, these are pieces from a series that I did called Occupational Hazards. And um, when I, uh, these were about Washington, D.C.'s gentrification, the gentrification process that we saw going here. And I considered it as a act of occupation. So I'm looking at that and I'm using the birds. They are targets, which I felt we were and are, and, um, and uh, signs, actual signs are in here. And uh, you can see the, um, the cranes. And then the cards are um, the gentry. So, um, and there's a black one down there. <laughs> so, you know, yes. Yeah. All right, well, this is definitely the time to open it up for questions, if, if we might have a couple. As, as I listen to you, I, I, you know, I just, I, I thought about how I, I never thought of myself as an artist, 
but but all of a sudden you 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 hit some things to me that I said I, I wish I had developed and and hopefully with my children and grandchildren and great grandchildren there's a chance for for them to be uh, encouraged and and nurtured uh, as opposed to having somebody knock you on the knuckles when you were in kindergarten saying you know you came outside the line or something you know so it was it was the art is should be bigger than just the strokes it's also an understanding and a, and a feeling so I, I don't know if you want to comment on that but I that's what I picked up in there like oh okay I, that's there's hope for me <laughs> <laughs> yes there is and for your grandson too and I hope that you will continue your work and I hope to see some of it mm -hmm. okay Thank you, Ms. Hunter, again. Uh, I do really appreciate the connection with the Ka and the Ba because as I look at the triangles, I almost look at it as the combination of the Kaaba where you have this life force within this, this bodily force, this physical force in combination. And so it's this wonderful conversation, this dance between the Kaaba that you have within here. But the, the piece that I really like, I guess, as I look at everything is just when I'm thinking about this idea of subjective and objective light and how you are touching upon this this objective physical form as we look at it, but you're really hitting the subjective idea of light, which we call enlightenment, you know what I mean? This internal piece, light in, 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 internal. Um, and so I wanted to, to kind of talk a little bit about how almost, how much your work almost represents these fractals of light, you know what I mean? My son always talks about photons, you know what I mean? And like, you know, and I almost see this as well. So I almost feel like you're, while speeding up, you're also slowing down light so we can see all the different pieces and, and the depth of it. So I just wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about that and potential fractal nature of, of your work. The Ba has, it's a, it's a you'll find it in Kemetan, um, uh, Nadun Netra, okay, in the Nadun Netra. Uh, and there is a, it's a bird body, but it has the head of a person. And uh, it uh, it guides and is uh, is uh, helpful to those that are on this plane. I just have a comment. I think I'm just going to take a wake okay and really try to process the concept of okay and this how it's an African concept of okay, but. Are we okay? Are we trying to be okay? Will we be okay? And I think it's all of them at the same time and the concept of to be as well. So I just wanted to thank you for that. And like Imar, there's so many other things that I needed this, like the Dr. Fukiao, the, all of this stuff is spinning around. So thank you both. Mine is a, a, a comment, sort of a piggyback from yours. Um, I, when I walked into the gallery, I immediately saw Gustav Klimt. And um, so the pieces mean for me the concept of okayness, the infinity of the zero, the O, and then you talked about the splitting apart. That's the K, right? The split, right going this way and that way. And in these pieces of taking flight, do we stay, pieces of us stay the same, and then we allow other pieces to become the triangle, the ego in and the super ego, you know, all in action, and, or do we go in a straight line, very disciplined, and, and so I think I see that in your work. See, I've watched this journey and it's a very uh, personal question as I've seen the work evolve. It comes from your interior. Does it represent your shift in paradigm of your consciousness? And how does consciousness relate in all of this? It's actually, it's, it's really all about consciousness. It's about energy. It's about understanding ourselves beyond the physical bodies that we have. Um, that we are so much more than that. Um, that we can demand things of ourselves that um, we've been told 
oh, you're, we're only human. No, it's not we're only human. It's that we are human. Mm -hmm. And that um, the capabilities that we have have been dulled by a society that is rather primitive. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to encourage our young people to develop themselves further. And it's interesting how the young people have cipher. Mm -hmm. Ha! They know. They know. They just haven't put it all together yet. So, uh, yes. Yeah. And just if I might bring out a little bit about what you had said um, about a collective knowing, a group knowing, <sighs> yes. and how the murmuration is that knowing. That's very good. That yeah. consciousness. That, that we have to be very careful of the individual. Uh, Fukiao talks about the development of the individual in his, in his village. He says, when a baby is born, all the elders, all the people come and they're looking and they're watching and they're, and they're trying to figure out who is this that has come here? How do we support the development of this being, mm -hmm. right? But we don't support the development of that being for them to be well, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. No. They are, you develop that being because of what they can bring back to the collective. Mm -hmm. 